So in this video, we're going to be making some more upbeat, chill hop, ethereal, ambient, uplifting vibes. So the final track is going to sound like this. So in this video, I'll run through the chords I was playing, process behind the track, some new VSTs that I've used in the track, and yeah, various different methods that I've come together to make this song. And before I break that down, I've been working on a lot of sound design recently and making some synth presets. And I just want to know what presets people would prefer me to focus on. So you've got stuff like Vital, which is a free synth that sounds amazing. You've got obviously Serum, which lots of people have got, Omnisphere, Diva, there's loads of different synth engines. So I'd love to know in the comments down below if there's any preference that you've got. And also I've pushed the date back for the Chill Drum competition to the 21st of April. So all you got to do to enter that is make a beat of any style and genre using some drums from the children pack to be in for a chance to win $100 or $50 or $30 and I'll be honest as it stands there's not that many entries so your odds are pretty good but anyway onto this ethereal track breakdown so to kick things off I wanted it to be quite soulful so I thought an e-piano would be great for the sort of bass chords of this track and I wanted a lot of texture to it so I'm going to layer some guitar and other pads and sounds and vocals into it as well but for the main e-piano as well I used the yarn texture so I used Tanya which is an elementary sounds e-piano and on top of that I laid in this yarn texture so this is what it sounds like just adds a sort of granular depth to the chords and that's just Tanya on its own so the chords I was playing were essentially uh, the same throughout so I started off with an A flat minor went over to a B major and then a D minor and I repeat and I'm playing different inversions and voicings, adding ninth, uh, adding seventh chord notes, etc. Uh, but more or less, I'm keeping to the main pattern. And then on top of that, to add a little bit more depth, I'm going to replicate the same chords, but with the guitar. So I'm using my Fano guitar, using the neck pickup, which is a hot P90. Going through my pedal board, where I'm going to use the Fender Benz compression to add a little bit of compression. I've got the Echoplex tape delay, which is adding a sort of subtle tape delay texture to that sort of slap delay uh, and then i'm going to use some fairfield circuitry compression and then from there i'm going into my laney l5 amp and from the laney l5 amp i'm going straight into ableton and this is what the main guitar chord progression sounds like so again i'm playing the same chords just to complement the e piano I'll go into the transitions and stuff in a little bit, but that is the main progression that textures with the Tyner. So now with just two tracks, we've got quite a nice depth already. I'll fade in the lows as the introduction. But I want a little bit more texture. So again, I played the same chords uh, a little bit higher up and adding them in as well. We get this. So again, same chords, uh, but playing them higher on the guitar. I also recorded it twice so I could pan one left, pan one right and add a little bit of width. Then I wanted a nice simple bass so I'm just following the root notes of the chords to add this bass texture. And for the bass all I'm doing is playing my sort of player series P bass going direct into the interface into the high impedance input and then yeah playing a clean sort of DI based term. So that was the initial concept that sort of kicked the track off. And then from there, I spent a lot more time than I would usually do on sort of automation and transitions and swells. And there's definitely some techniques from this that I'm going to utilize in future tracks. So I'm just going to delve in and show you what I've done exactly. So first off, a little background texture with the Market Atmos. So nothing crazy there. And then I've recorded the guitar lead, uh, taking it separately from the instrument bus because I didn't want it to go through all of the automation and effects on the instrument bus. Um, and I want it to just sort of stick out and sit above that. So on there, I've taken the usual guitar rack, which I talked about in the introduction, add a bit of spaced out and particle verb, which are both big reverb sounds, and then a sketch cassette on there with a little bit of sketch cassette movement, wobble and flutter, and some filtering. So I've got a bit of a low pass filter that kicks in to uh, give it the sort of muffled gritty track in a little dropout bit. And then along with a couple of other transitions, this builds up and it brings in the highs again. And then we've got the sort of mini drop. Everything opens up. So there's a few things going on there, but the guitar is sort of sitting above all of that. 
anyway with a little bit of filtering to the highs so then onto the instrument bus so on here we've got a few effects that are helping with the transitions and helping glue everything together so the first one is a portal which is what you get this sort of choppiness of some of the drops I solo that you get the sort of granular texture that's from the portal we've then got a filter auto filter which is first sort of slowly bringing the lows back in just to help the introduction fade and then as it gets towards the drops it's cutting out the lows a little bit so when everything drops in it's a bit more impactful eq8 on there just for a bit tidy up with the low end in general and then we've got an auto filter doing the opposite so this one is cutting the highs and this does this after the drop to give it a sort of mini drop i guess i think there's a name for it uh, so it's most impactful here building up and then it cut everything away quite muffled and then everything opens up creating space so the way i've done that is firstly using the auto filter in to cut away everything above 1.82 kilohertz which gives it muffled sound and then i've also got this uh, utility on there so that's sort of automating the stereo width so when it's 100 it's not affecting the stereo width whatever i've done panning wise it's just as it is obviously as it goes down to zero percent it's making everything completely mono and then after that I've exaggerated it up to nearly 200% to make everything extra wide just to emphasize that sort of uh, stereo width. Opens up. I've done some similar things on the drums which we'll talk about in a minute. But that is the bus effects uh, for the instruments. Also, quickly mention, I've got two sends. One is the Baby Audio Spaced Out plugin with the lows cut on there as well. It's just a sort of, it's a bit like a Valhalla Shimmer, but not quite as dramatic a nice sort of bright reverb that I can send a lot of the instruments and drums to. And I've also got a choppy sweep here, which is the Dreamy Music Box preset from Portal, which is a sort of granular synth send, again, cutting the lows. So this is adding a little bit of texture to the top end as well, with some of the Vox getting sent to that. So the Keys Bus has got a few things in there. We've got the Tanya effect. Uh, so I've got the MIDI here, just so I can keep the MIDI. I've not actually used it because I've already flattened it with some Soothe. So that's the main sort of keys. We've got variations of the chord progression. That's just sort of the block chord version. And on top of the block chord version, we layer this synthy pad, which is from the Ulfa Arnold Stratus, which are flattened fresh air. Space that on there. Uh, we've also got some choir sounds from Eric Whittaker Choir. There's a few more of these in a different section, which I'll talk about in a minute. But the Eric Whittaker Choir is a nice... It's a really nice choir sample library. It's a bit expensive uh, if you're only using it for textures. Um, but yeah, it could be worth checking out if you're after some vocal choir samples. So I use the soprano dynamic movements on that. And there's also a new VST which I use for some pads. And that one is called Tosca. So it's a bit like the, uh, it's a bit like Landforms Auras actually. It's a different company though. It's sort of vo uh, cinematic pads and textures with quite a cool intuitive interface where you control things like reverb, width, saturation and stuff like that. So I've got a few pads from that. One is uh, this one that I just showed you, which is the interior space patch. And I've also got this one here, which is the ether patch. Quite a synthy sort of brass sounding uh, effect. And I've got some filtering on there and some particle reverb. Uh, and that sort of more or less sums it. We've got a couple of reverse textures as well for Tyna, uh, which I've used a lot of in the drums as well. Just reverse swells can be quite nice. It gives it a little bit of a rise feel to it. And then I've got a slightly different version in the intro. This is just the same chord progression, but with the lows cut. So then when it comes into the main section of the track, it's a bit more impactful. So that's the keys. And then in the guitars, uh, as I mentioned, I've gone through the same chain as I talked about in the introduction. So I've got this sort of main chord progression. I've got the uh, group, which is where I've done two takes of the higher progression. One pan left, one pan right. In the left one, I've also got this like reverse swell, which moves from left to right, which sort of comes in different sections of the track. And then I've got two more uh, tracks with just some little embellishments. 
So this one's got an auto filter, auto pan, sorry, moving it left to right throughout the track with a bit of spaced out. And this one's just my normal guitar chain with uh, nothing added to it for a little additional embellishment. So that's the guitars and the keys. Next up, the ambience bus was just uh, some Oliver Patrice Welder sounds. So two patches panned, one left, one right. And then I've also uh, taken one of these, freezed it and reversed it for some little swells. And on these, you can hear it's a bit choppy. That's just a portal preset. I think it's a default preset, yeah, default, which is just a little choppy uh, automation thing. The little bit of volume automation as well to have some vocal swells. The next up we have uh, some more sounds from Eric Whittaker's choir. These are just the sort of uh, outro, I guess, to give it a little bit more of that orchestral, cinematic, uh, uplifting sound. Nothing crazy going on there. You get there's loads of different choir libraries as well that you can use. There's loads on the piano book for free. It's a bit of like audio. I've got a few. Uh, and I think maybe there's a labs one as well. There's one or two labs ones that you can use that do the same thing in this context. We've also got some synth sounds, and these are both from the uh, synth Oliver. Arnold's Stratus Synth Matrix Swarms, just adding a little bit more texture in the high end. Um, and then on top of that, I've got a little arcade patch with some more sort of detailed articulations. That's the Enduring Spirit patch. So we've got some filtering to the highs and lows and an EFX fragments, which is really mostly there just for this panning movement automation, which is quite cool. And there's a little bit of a granular synth on there as well, which is giving it like a pitched granular synth sound some sections so in the intro we've just got the keys and the guitar with a little bit of automation to filter them in a little transition into the main section where we've got the bass so the bass is the p bass which i showed you in the intro and i've also layered it in some sections with just a smooth sub bass which i don't think you can get this anymore but it's just a simple sub bass that textures in with the main bass and then some seconds i just switch to the bass on its own so nothing crazy going on there. And on the bass bus, I've used Gnaw actually, which is a bit like um, our bass from uh, Waves. And it's just focusing in on different frequencies so you can change how dramatic it is and you can change sort of uh, the level and the range. But it's a nice one for sort of boosting the bass and, and a little bit of warmth, which I'm using to the sub lows. I've also got a kick, of course, from the... Uh, my organic lo-fi pack which is the ml dusty kick one and then onto the drum bus so on the drum bus uh, i don't know why that's not doing anything got some auto filtering which is helping with transitions so you can see here we cut away the drums so rather than just dropping the volume we're dropping the uh, high frequencies and then we can slowly fade the high frequencies back which in itself helps with the transitions. And then I cut them again for the little drop out bit. And then it's back. I've also used the uh, tape rack from Elephant. I've talked about it in the past. It's just a great uh, stock Ableton effect rack, which was made by music producer Elephant. I've also got convolution reverb on there, which I automate in certain sections as well to just add a little bit of uh, spacey reverb to the highs. So EQ the lows there as well. I've got a Lux on there, which is a fantastic saturator, which I'm using a lot recently. It just sounds great on everything. You can control uh, how dramatic it is. And there's two versions of it. But other than that, that's it. Um, and it just works. It's a great little saturator. Would recommend checking out from Cleveland Audio. And then again, I'm using some automation to the width uh, for that same section, which is the most dramatic version of it, where I mono the drums and then open them up again. And then within the drums, it's just uh, I took the time to find lots of sounds that work well together, lots of lots of presets from Splice and some addictive drums and some of my own recordings. Uh, so yeah, I've got stuff like this, which is a sort of snappy, percussive sound, like a clap sound. 
I've got a hi-hat loop, which is from Splice, the Lex SL84 loop. I've got uh, drums from Addictive Drums, which is adding a sort of granulary cymbals. So I've got spaced out and a portal on here, and I'm using the Jazz Sticks kit. So I just spent my time adding depth to this, uh, making sure to add and remove things as the track progressed to keep it interesting. It's a little Xander percussion loop. Got some snaps, some like finger clicks, which work quite well because it's got quite a wide sound. Oh, you can't hear it there, but you can hear it here. And then we've got some brush samples, some percussive tops, uh, some little recordings that I did myself, which was just uh, which was just a sort of I think it was a chopstick on the cup. Just add a little bit of variance to it. It's great to record little fan sounds, little pen clicks and taps and clicking your fingers, whatever it may be. It can just add a, a sort of human natural element to the track, which works really well. Some layered snares, which are from the organic lo-fi pack that I released a little while ago. A couple of little transition sounds. We've got this little thing here and a faller sound. And then I've taken my time to add some additional textures. It's like these. So we've got like reverse textures, little delay samples, which is moving left to right, and some more reverse textures here. So that's the track. I hope you liked the video. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this. I've got some interesting videos coming out soon, so do hit the notification bell to be the first to be notified about that. Or you can head over to Discord and get a YouTube gang tag, which will make you the first to know about any video uploads and any exclusive content that I'll be dropping in the near future. Uh, but yeah, what do you reckon of this track? Do you want me to make more stuff like this? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm just going to let this play out for a little bit. But yeah, thanks for watching and catch you next time. Thank you.